Welcome to the Boxing Gossip Channel. Happy New Year to everyone tuning in. Uh, for those of you who are new or haven't done so before, please take the time to subscribe so you can check out all of my other stuff. Um, going to start the new year with a Patreon request video. Uh, I'm going to give thanks to Aaron who was kind enough to um, sign up to my Patreon uh, and to put forward the following video request. And Aaron says, I'm going to read from his uh, email. Um, I was wondering if you could possibly do a video on the featherweight division, as I believe it's the best division in the sport. I would be interested to hear your views on it and who you think would come out on top if they did a World Boxing Super Series in that division. Uh, so I thought that was a really interesting question. I thought that would make some uh, good debate. And actually, I think it is one of the better divisions in boxing. I don't think it's impossible that it is one that the World Boxing Super Series organisers will be having a good look at for... Uh, 2018 or 2019 when they're looking to do the second generation of the World Boxing Super Series and even if this division is overlooked and they decide to pick other divisions I think there's a good op good chance that with some of the fighters and some of the places they're at in their careers that we might actually see um, big fights made anyway within this division so I thought it was one worth talking about so for a start what I would say is this division for me has quite an established top 10 you know it's got a really really strong top 10 where a lot of the top fighters have real big name value uh, a lot of them are very established on the world scene you've got a good combination of guys who've been champions for several years or been on championship scene for several years you've got guys who are prospects coming through and being world champions for the same you know for the first time and you've got your established contenders so before doing this video i kind of wrote down the list of names of people you'd be looking at if you were organising a World Boxing Super Series tournament within featherweight. Um, and the names that I came up with were, and some of them are obvious, Lee Selby, Carl Frampton, Leo Santa Cruz, Oscar Valdez, Josh Warrington, Nanito Donaire, Gary Russell Jr., Scott Quigg, Abner Maraz, and Joseph Jojo Diaz. So there's 10 names for you at featherweight. And I've kind of read them out there in, in no particular order. That was by no means a 1 to 10. So if we're going to take this fictional example further, there's actually four of those fighters who are already apparently scheduled to face each other. So Lee Selby versus Josh Warrington. I don't believe the fight's been formally announced yet, but we believe uh, an announcement could be imminent for those guys to face off. Carl Frampton versus Nanito Donaire. I think I've seen that fight listed on BoxRack. Again, I'm not sure it's been officially announced yet, but it looks like um, that fight could well happen. So perhaps you could do what they did for like the, the Eubank, was it Eubank versus Quinlan fight? Where that served as an eliminator, if you like, to fight in the World Boxing Series. And perhaps you could have those two fights as eliminators um, with the, the winners going through into the quarterfinals. So Selby Warrington, clearly Selby's going to be a favourite there. Frampton Denaire, clearly Frampton's going to be a favourite there. So you'd probably be left, unless upsets happen, which could always be the case, you'd probably be left with the seeds, the top four seeds for that tournament being Lee Selby, Carl Frampton, Leo Santa Cruz, and probably Gary Russell Jr. You'd probably pick Gary Russell Jr. over Oscar Valdez, I would guess, as a seed. And then you'd have the other four, um, the non-seeded fighters, I would guess, as Oscar Valdez, Scott Quigg, Jojo Diaz, and Abner Maras. And I think with that lineup, you could get some absolutely fantastic fights. And I think it really would be, um, you know, a World Boxing Super Series to, uh, to remember. And with the money in these lower weight divisions, you know, it may be that you could get some of those really, really, really big fights on with the World Boxing Super Series framework. You know, it's very possible that the money that series offers and, you know, the, the exposure and the potential it has, you know, could make all of the fighters I've mentioned join. You know, I don't see any one of those fighters who would, you know, really shy away from a tournament like that with some of the money at stake. So, you know, it could be, it could be real interesting. You know, Jojo Diaz, a very, very highly rated guy. Um, I've seen bits of him. He looks, you know, top notch. He perhaps hasn't fought the elite of the division just yet, but he's looked good against some decent names. Got a guy like Oscar Valdez with wins over Mariaga, wins over Gradovitz. He looks to have skills in droves. You've got your established contenders, guys who've been on the scene a while, like Abner Mares, 
Scott Quigg, and then you've kind of got your creme de la creme of the top four, if you like. Gary Russell Jr., Leo Santa Cruz, Carl Frampton, and uh, and Lee Selby. So some real, real tasty names and some good potential fight combinations. Let's look at where the division's at. Carl Frampton, for me, he's a tough guy to sum up. He put in a very questionable performance last time out. And some felt that he was quite lucky to get away with the win in that fight. Uh, he was obviously coming off a loss, as we know, against Leo Santa Cruz. Uh, so Carl Frampton, you start to wonder, are the wheels of time turning against him? Have we seen the best of Carl Frampton? I'm not saying he's finished, but, you know, have we seen the best of him is probably a fair way to phrase it. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz... He had a big win uh, against Carl Frampton. He won the rematch. And, and ever since then, it's been ever so slightly um, slightly quiet on the Santa Cruz front. I'm just having a, a look at his box work, actually, to see if he's actually been out uh, subsequent to that Carl Frampton victory. I'm just pulling it up now. Um, he has. Oh, yeah, he knocked out Chris Avalos in a decidedly one-sided fight. And Bokshak, coincidentally, do have him as the number one featherweight. You know, I like what I saw in that Frampton rematch. He adapted. Uh, he evolved his game in a way that I wasn't actually sure that he would be able to evolve it. And, you know, he, he emerged from that with a lot of credit. So, possibly, I'd have more confidence behind Leo Santa Cruz than Carl Frampton going into a tournament like this. A guy like Lee Selby, very, very hard to sum up for me. He's a guy who... Sometimes he's involved in slightly boring fights. Sometimes he's guilty of not going through the motions and the gears. And, you know, he can drift into sparring partner mode. I believe in his last fight he put in quite a first gear performance, which kind of left a lot of fans wanting more. But there's no doubt that on his day, Lee Selby is a world-class fighter. And he's, you know, one of the most skilled, slick, slippery operators in British boxing, if not world boxing. You know, a guy like... Oscar Valdez, Jojo Diaz, you know, they could be anything. We'll wait to see as they continue to step up, but they look like serious, serious talents. Uh, a guy like Gary Russell Jr. Um, uh, has really, really impressed me throughout his career. Obviously, he did suffer that um, pretty one-sided loss to Vasil Lomachenko, but Lomachenko has gone on from that fight to be now considered one of the best fighters pound for pound in the world. And, you know, Gary Russell Jr. has bounced back from that with four wins. He's shown good hand speed. He's shown several knockouts in his last fights and he's another one who very very much deserves to be in the discussion so it's it's very 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 competitive very competitive so perhaps let's start with who would i be ruling out well for a start i've ruled out warrington and the because i've said most likely they're going to be losing to frampton and selby ahead of the tournament i'm probably ruling out abner Mares and scott quigg um i'm probably I'm probably going to say this tournament is between Lee Selby and Leo Santa Cruz. I actually think that might be a potential final here. Or I think that may be the potential best matchup. You know, guys like Gary Russell Jr. narrowly miss out. Guys like Carl Frampton narrowly miss out. But I do believe that Leo Santa Cruz and Lee Selby pose real stylistic problems. And I believe those are both guys who potentially are, are, are at their peak. And still maybe have their, their best performances in them. Uh, whereas someone like a someone like a Carl Frampton, you just wonder if, if the signs are starting to be there. You know, he's had problems outside of the ring recently, which are well known with the McWiggins. He is getting a bit older. You know, he had that, that loss which must have hit him. You just wonder, you just wonder if as I say, his best days are behind him. So I think a likely final could be Leo Santa Cruz versus Lee Selby. And it may be an unpopular pick, especially if people are tuning in from abroad. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if Lee Selby emerged from the pack as the number one featherweight. You know, it's a, it's a very competitive division. But in a sense, it's kind of an open division. You know, you might have Leo Santa Cruz as number one based on the win over Frampton. Uh, but there's no one you could say was clearly miles ahead of the rest. And I kind of think when I watch Lee Selby, he's got that extra 5-10% in his game that he can bring out for the big fights. You know, we've seen him look absolutely magnificent. We've seen him look more average in other fights. But one thing Lee Selby has always done is won, and he's always won convincingly. So I say he's always won. It's just occurring to me that he did actually... Uh, I'm trying to remember if it was a loss or a draw, but he did actually have a, 
uh, yeah, he suffered a loss early on in his career. Was it was it a four rounder uh, against uh, Samir Munayai back in two thousand and nine? So I say he always wins, and uh, you know maybe I'm uh, I, I'm incorrect in in stating that as a fact. Um, but for me, I look at Lee Selby, and I still think um, you know there's there's an extra five or ten percent to his game, and you know on his day he can be pretty unbeatable. Um, Selby's thirty years old. Uh, he's very big at the weight. You know, you, you kind of look at him and you think he has to kill himself to make the weight, and that's not going to get any easier whatsoever as he moves into his 30s, early 30s, 31, 32. Um, but I believe he's a more complex fighter than the likes of a Frampton or than the likes of a, um, a Leo Santa Cruz. I think he's very, very tough to hit, very tough to hit. Um, and I think he really is someone who's kind of mastered that art of hit and not getting hit. And if he could raise his game for a big tournament like that and put together two or three back-to-back -back fights in impressive fashion, uh, Selby is actually the guy who could emerge from the pack and become the established number one at featherweight. And maybe he could even move up to super featherweight, you know, at 31, 32, and have one or two fights there and hopefully make a few pounds before exiting the sport. He's kind of a fighter who is shown that he's a world level fighter he's shown that he's a deserving world champion but he probably hasn't shown form against the highest level of opposition purely because he hasn't fought that highest level of opposition but he's got a new promotional team around him now he's 30 years old and you kind of get the sense with lee selby it's now or never really in terms of making big waves making big money and making big fights and you know i think lee selby uh could be the dark horse of that division and he could be you know, the forgotten man. There are certainly more glamorous names like Frampton, Santa Cruz, Russell Jr. Um, but Lee Selby is someone, for me, who could be very, very tough to beat. You know, guys like Oscar Valdez, guys like Jojo Diaz, as I've said earlier in the video, they could be anything. They look like huge, huge, huge talents. Um, and look, if they emerged as future dominant fighters, future elite fighters, who knows, maybe even future pound-for-pound -pound fighters, um, then, you know, that they could easily run through a tournament like that, like Andre Ward did through the Super 6. And, you know, you, you, it would be the platform for them to superstar them. Um, but right now, my money would be with Lee Selby. But I think it's a great division. And even if that Super Series doesn't happen, and it may not happen, who knows? Uh, you know, these fights have to happen. You know, you look at the names I've mentioned. Firstly, you've got Selby, Warrington, Frampton, and they're already lined up, hopefully, for the first half of 2018. But, you know, you look at these kind of names. They all want to make money. They all want the big fights. They all want to make money. How old is Russell Jr.? How old is Santa Cruz? How old is Quig? How old is Frampton? How old is Selby? You know, these guys must all be 29, 30, 31. They must all be that sort of bracket. At, super, at featherweight, you know, they're not going to want to be in the sport in three or four years' time. The time for them to make their money is now, and the way they're going to make their money is by fighting each other. So I'd absolutely love and applaud a Super Series in this division, but even if we don't have it, perhaps some of those fights will get made anyway. Perhaps we'll see these matchups made, um, you know, especially in Britain with, with Frank Warren looking after Selby and Warrington and Frampton. Perhaps Frampton will fight Denair, and if he wins... He'll fight the winner of Selby Warrington. Perhaps the loser of Selby Warrington will fight the loser of Frampton Donette. Um, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating division, a good mix. And, uh, yeah, for me, as I say, I've got that little soft spot for Lee Selby. Let me know your thoughts. Give me your comments in the section below. Who do you think would emerge number one if they did have a World Boxing Super Series? Who would be your pick? As always, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, please hit subscribe and please press that thumbs up button. Thanks for tuning in.